Hey everybody, how's it going? It's uh, Roy Canning, and I guess this is my live Q&A. Um, I was joking with Kenny, I was like, I don't know if anybody's gonna show up to this, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, feel free to start asking questions down below, and uh, I'll try to answer as many as I can. And uh, I guess first I'll talk about, Tom was, uh, saying, hey, Roy, would you want to do a Q&A on Monday? Have people been like asking about it and stuff like that? So I was like, OK, cool. Let's, uh, let's do the Q&A. And he's like, oh, yeah, just make the thumbnail whatever you want. So if you're wondering why the thumbnail looks like something out of like, like crazy space time jumping pirates, that's uh, why. And I was like, hey, Tom, look at my thumbnail. And he's like, I won't make that mistake again. But uh, good morning, everybody. How's it going? What has been the best part of working at the Dice Tower so far? Um, I knew I was going to get a, probably a bunch of questions about the new job and, and all that stuff. Um, probably the best part is like literally just being able to hang out with the guys. I mean, we do lots of work, and it's crazy to see how much work these guys do, um, running around, like making sure to get reviews done, making sure to get videos done and things edited. But like just the times that we get to like hang out and goof around and joke around, they really are like they are in their top 10 list. So it's really cool to hang out with them. I've hung out with the Dice Tower crew tons at conventions and things like that for a long time. But it's really cool to be here and be working together and trying to make awesome content for you guys. Um, but yeah, so how has my transition to the Dice Tower been? Um, so my transition, um, of course, moving from one state to another is always crazy. Um, but I was working a job basically where I worked basically distributing international food. So I was like stacking food on pallets and working like all night long. And like it was really actually kind of a strain because I was still trying to do my board game media stuff and do my podcast and do all that stuff at the same time with working this like 50 hour a week job. So transitioning into the Dice Tower was actually Amazing. Um, we had to pack everything up and get everything moved down here, um, which is kind of crazy because um, I don't know if any of you guys out there listen to like my content that I did before, but I have a podcast and my co-host there is a real estate agent and he actually helped me get my house ready and make sure everything was in line to uh, put it up on the market because we actually owned our house and we got all that stuff uh, situated and um, I basically like blitz clean because I continued working. I was working 40 hours a week and I continued working trying to get everything all in place and in the right place to uh, get my house up on the market. I put like everything in storage and then we got it up on the market and um, it ended up selling like I think it went up the day after Christmas and it was under contract in like three days which is ridiculous. So Robert Newman is the most handsome real estate agent ever. Um, so thank you so much. But, uh, but yeah, so literally our house was under contract before we even started moving down to Florida. And I came down like the beginning of January and got the training with, with Derek and everything like that. And I mean, I have experience doing um, a lot of Premiere Pro stuff, but we use Final Cut here. Um, so it was interesting learning how to use Final Cut and the, thing, the ways that it's different, but it's still video editing software. So it's, it's been a lot of fun um, doing all this stuff. The main thing I can say about transitioning is that uh, getting your car switched over, getting your kids into school, getting getting a condo to like live in is all a pain in the neck, especially with HOAs down here in Florida. So transitioning has been insane, but we're I think we're finally starting to settle in a little bit. My son starts school on Tuesday, so hopefully it should be all good from there. Um, so yeah. Uh, Chad says that he doesn't trust me yet, so to gain his trust, I have to tell him my top five games of all time. Uh, I did a top 100 on the channel, like, was it year before last? May I, it's kind of crazy like how long I've actually been doing stuff on the Dice Tower, but um, I did my top 100 forever ago, but I think currently, I have to think about it to put them in the correct order, but I'll give the, you a top five not necessarily in the correct order. So I'd say Twilight Imperium, definitely up there. Um, Heroes of Land, Air and Sea, if you can see I like 4X games. Um, Zaya, War of the Ring, and Mansions of Madness. We'll just say those. Um, that's not in a particular order. I'd have to think hard because a lot of times the top of this list are like, which one do I play most recently? Which one do I love the most? Uh, but yeah, some really great games. I'm definitely into the big thematic epic games, if you can't tell by that list. Um, yeah. How do I keep my hair so perfectly sculpted? Um, well, a lot of it is this is I slept on this hair and woke up like this. So um, 
Yeah. Uh, but I use a hair product called Got To Be Glued. Um, it's kind of funny because I've actually had like lots of people ask me that question after seeing certain videos. It's kind of, kind of funny. But there's this stuff that I've used for like literally the last 10 years or so. Um, probably more than that. I've used that hair product for a long time. It's like Got To Be Glued. It comes like a yellow tube and you can buy it at most like places like Walmart or whatever. But I just put it in my hair and make it a mess. It like takes no time at all to do. Um, I definitely don't spend that much time on my hair, but it definitely sticks up straight. Uh, what game am I most excited to come out in 2019? I think currently I'm really excited. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I'm pretty sure Lord of the Rings is like my favorite intellectual property. I love Lord of the Rings. When I was a kid, I used to run around in the woods with my best friend pretending to be Frodo and Sam and like we would get a bunch of other kids to play with us and we'd give them all like different characters from the fellowship. And we actually were playing out in the woods one time and we got to where we had given out all the, the normal roles and one kid wanted to play with us still. And I was just like, ah, you can, you can be Gollum. He's like, is that that frog guy? This was like way before the movies ever came out. We were big into the cartoons and the books and things like that. But the game I'm most excited about for 2019 so far is the, um, what's the game called? It's like, uh, Journeys in Middle Earth, the new like uh, Lord of the Rings game from Fantasy Flight. I guess it's supposed to be app driven, similar to um, Mansions of Madness, and I'm a huge fan of Mansions of Madness and what it adds to the game. So I'm hoping that game's good because it has to be good because I love Lord of the Rings. I love that IP, and I really like a lot of Fantasy Flight games. So if they mess it up, they better make it good. So I'm super excited about that. Um. Do my kids try to put things in my earrings? Um, I think probably when they were like super young, but now they know at this point that that, that hurts. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, when, when they were like, like babies, they'd like grab my ears or whatever. I'm sure moms have that issue just as much. <sighs> but yeah, good times. Cool, cool. Trenton says, big fan of Epic Gaming Night. Thanks so much, man. Um, we've been doing that for a long time now. And it's just fun. It's like literally like we just turn on the cameras and just have fun talking to our friends. And we get some cool guests on sometimes, which is really fun. We just had an episode where we had a guy who does 3D printing um, for D&D &D stuff. And we talked. He's basically the guy that got me into 3D printing by watching his YouTube channel. And I watched a ton of uh, his stuff. And we had him come on the podcast um, last week to talk about 3D printing. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so happy that I'm getting my own time. Favorite Game Friday is one of my favorite segments, and I love Epic Gaming Night. Thank you for all your hard work. Hey, thanks, Lennon. You're the best. Um, how do I love Cthulhu? Well, I started having these dreams, and after that, the madness sunk in. Um, heroes, I eight. Mean, Oh yeah, HOAs are the devil. Yeah, for sure. Um, T Tom will let you know that he's not a big fan of HOAs either, but I guess they're keeping my neighborhood safe now that I'm in it, as long as they don't try to do anything crazy until then. Um, yeah, Brent, why haven't we played Keyforge together? Like I saw you at PAX Unplugged, but I feel like everybody was just all over the place um, there, and I was super busy. But yeah, we'll definitely have to try to hit up some Keyforge at some time. Um, I'm not good at the game. I think I lose most of the time. But I definitely have fun playing it. And I'm trying to learn how to, like, the correct way to play. Um, but it's definitely a ton of fun. Maybe my decks just aren't that good. We'll blame it on that. Um, good times. Who's my favorite agent to play in Specter Ops? I know this is probably a cop-out because lots of people probably pick this character, but I, I I like to get in there and like just run as fast as I can. And I think that that uh, Blue Jay makes it easier because I don't actually have to walk up to the different like objective spots. I can be two spaces away and it makes them have to think like it just gives them a broader area because whenever you fulfill those objectives, it'll like flip over and the agents will know, OK, they were there. Well, if you bring it out to where they can be two spaces away, I could technically be further away. Um, I really need to branch out and try some of the other agents, um, especially some of the new ones. Um, but I'd still like to go back and like try the, uh, the the orangutan guy, the guy that has just extra hit points, and just like 
just be a tank and just run through. Be like, I don't care if you see me. I'm just running straight through this thing and running out. That's pretty much what I did last time I played Blue Jay anyway. Um, um, what is my favorite movie, novel, and author? From Kabuki Kid. Um, well, Lord of the Rings. Can, can I fill them all out in the same thing? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, the books, and J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm a nerd. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I like Lord of the Rings stuff. I pretty much like anything super, super nerdy. Um, I'm into all that stuff. I know chat keeps talking about Dune all the time. My dad, like, we played a lot of Dune, the board game, growing up, and my dad made us watch those movies. He's, like, big into fantasy and sci-fi as well. Um, so I like the Dune stuff, even though I've never read the books. Um, I think he tried to steer me away from doing that, which is kind of funny. <laughs> uh. Which IPs would you like to see in games? I I'm probably like the wrong person to <laughs> ask this because I, I, I really like thematic stuff, but I'm very much like a basic geek. I don't know if that's like a thing or maybe I should turn that into a thing. Like I just like fantasy and sci-fi. Like I know there's way too many fantasy games. There's way too many sci-fi games. There's way too many games that are just done in the same thing. But I still get excited when I see a really cool space game or a really cool fantasy game or a really cool Lovecraft game. Um, it still gets me excited even though there's a million games already in those categories. It's just just because uh, I guess probably a bunch of you are basic too. <laughs> um, good times. Now I see what they're complaining about when they're like, oh, the chat jumps around. It's because people keep talking and people keep pushing up. I'm hoping that I didn't miss too many questions. Um, what is the worst slash best part of Florida since I moved? Um, it's kind of funny. When we were driving down, so from from North Carolina, like Winston-Salem, down to Homestead, Florida is like 12 hours, something like that. And we got out like at the beginning or like halfway through Florida, like me and my son got out of the U-Haul and we had our jackets on. And I'm like, it is no longer cold. Like, why do we have our jackets on? Like we took the jackets off, we're like sweating and we're just like, it's not winter here. Like it's, it's the opposite of Chronicles of Narnia. It's always summer, never winter. Um, so I'm really enjoying it now that it's, uh, that it's like technically Florida's winter because it's like nice outside. It's not, it's not cold at all and it's not too hot. Um, so we've been like spending time as a family like going to the beach and we went to like a, um, a Chinese New Year festival with like Kenny yesterday. So we've been trying to do a lot of like outdoorsy stuff while the weather's nice here in Florida. Um, but I guess we'll see what it's like when it actually starts getting hotter. Um, what's the, one of my least favorite things? Um, probably the, the traffic. <laughs> the traffic's pretty bad in Miami. Um, and uh, just the way the roads are around here is quite a bit different than like in North Carolina. Um, everything's like on a grid, but then there's like a toll road you have to pay money to drive up, but it's like the only way to get anywhere fast, but the traffic's just terrible everywhere. Um, and if your light turns green and your foot is not immediately on the gas, the person behind you will honk. Like, immediately and I'm like I'm a little bit too chill for that so uh, <laughs> okay okay I'll, I'll go um, good times though but yeah I've been loving Florida so far um, just driving in it, it's kind of interesting um, Halo says I'm excited about Star Wars Outer Rim how about you um yeah I saw that and I immediately was like I need to text Sam about this he's gonna be excited but um but yeah uh, the Star Wars IP um, I lo like Star Wars, and I grew up on Star Wars, but I feel like it's been done a ton. But that sort of game in the Star Wars IP seems really exciting, because it feels like a Firefly-ish, Zaya-style game. And if it feels very, like, sandboxy, where you can run around and do things in a bunch of different ways, um, I'm definitely excited to try it out. And you get to play with those cool Star Wars characters, because the whole, like, smuggler side of Star Wars seems interesting. If it's like a pick up and deliver where you get to do different missions and things like that, I'll be real excited to uh, try it out. And uh, I try not to be too much of a Fancy Flight fanboy. Um, what's my favorite band or favorite style of music? Um, 
So I really like pop punk stuff. I don't know. I like most alternative stuff or like emo music. I don't know. Like people are probably like, ah, this guy, whatever. But that's what I like. Um, I played in several bands uh, growing up. I pray, played in, basically it started out as like a Christian praise and worship band where I played bass and stuff, but it kind of morphed more into like a screamo praise and worship band. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, but uh, we did a lot of like hardcore stuff and like I did bass. I played bass in most of the bands I played in, but I've also done like vocals. I did like screaming. <laughs> I'm sure T Tom like it hates screaming music, but I did like screamo music in a band and then like I did a band where I was just the lead singer and it was just me singing and screaming. Um, and I mean nothing I ever played in as far as bands go got very far, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I like that kind of music, but majority of the time I can't listen to like like hardcore stuff like if i'm in the mood to be like yeah hardcore that's cool but a lot of times i just listen to like pop punk stuff um but favorite band would be uh mxpx i've been listening to them for like forever and it's just crazy that they still play music after all these years yeah but yeah mostly bass is what i play um felix the cat i know who felix the cat is um, but I don't know about the IP. What is on my tattoo sleeve? I have like a big like Leviathan looking thing. It's like a water dragon, like crushing a Viking ship um, on my lower arm here, um, which I got this like way before Blood Rage ever came out. But now I'm like, it's my Blood Rage tattoo, even though it's not really. Um, but I, it's like green with like an orange stomach. So when I painted my little like, um, whatever it's called. Is it called the Leviathan? I don't know. The little water dragon thing from Blood Rage. I painted him up the same way as my tattoo um, when I painted my copy of the game. Um, I still need to paint all the characters, but I painted all the monsters. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's the lower part. And then up on the top of my arm is like a ship with like some squid tentacles. I don't know. Very water themed as far as my sleeve goes. Um... Yes, Rob is a handsome man. He should be in chat to hear hear me say that live on the Dice Tower. <laughs> he hears it enough on our own channel anyway. Um, do I plan to do Tiny Epic Nights? No, I, I do Giant Epic Nights. No, no, I, I need to find, um, like, a lot of times... I guess I need to like see, cause we, we go up to Kindle, which is probably like 30 minutes away to uh, uh, the Cool Stuff Meetup to play games on Tuesdays. And I currently have my podcast on Tuesdays as well. So it's, it's hard to get up there and get back. And I really wanna play um, lots of longer games, but I don't have a lot of time, but I still wanna go up there and see people and try to meet people from the area. Cause I mean, I'm trying to interject myself in the gaming community here down in Homestead, which that's technically Miami. Um, but I'm excited because I think once a month, like the last Saturday of each month, there's game days. And hopefully I can like carve the time in my schedule now that we're starting to get more settled in to be able to go to the game days for like the Dice Tower meetup game days and get some epic games played. Um, but the cool thing is now that I'm here with the Dice Tower, I get to go to the Dice Tower cons and things like that. And hopefully I'll get to play some of those epic games with you. On the cruise, I played tons of epic games. <laughs> uh, sad that I left North Carolina, but super psyched for my new opportunity. Thanks, Glenn. Um, yeah, there's definitely lots of cool things in North Carolina. Um, I helped... Um, there's a convention called Recon that I helped start at my church. Um, my pastor and Luke, a guy who's really big into Envoy and really big into board games in the community there as well, started a con called Recon. And we've been doing that. So we had that going each year. There's like Mace and like um, all sorts of other conventions. Um, Tim Braun does like an awesome like international tabletop day every year. So there's lots of cool conventions in the like the like triad North Carolina area. So if you're in North Carolina and aren't plugged into like any of those like meetup groups or any of like those like small conventions that are there, definitely make sure to check it out. It's a really cool way to meet people from the North Carolina area. And uh, I'll miss everybody there, but uh, hopefully I'll get to see you guys at Dice Tower Con. 
cool, cool. Are there any Kickstarters up right now that I'm looking forward to? Honestly, I kind of try to stay away from constantly looking at Kickstarters. Um, I don't have a whole lot of Kickstarters backed uh, as like a total. Um, mostly just because they're not the cheapest thing in the world and we're kind of in a transition period um, of sort. It actually makes me super sad because I love Blood Rage and I love the miniatures and Cool Me or Not and I backed the Blood Rage Kickstarter for like one dollar because I'm like I'm gonna get in on the pledge manager. Hopefully we'll have moved and we'll be fine and I think the pledge manager just ended so like I wasn't actually able to like get the cool play mat or any of that different stuff but I'm trying to be fiscally responsible and um, be able to survive moving uh, down the country. Um, but yeah, uh, I try to not constantly look at Kickstarters, but now I'm here running crowd surfing from behind the scenes. So I get to listen to these guys talk about all the awesome Kickstarters and maybe someday I'll get to play them, just not be able to purchase them. <laughs> um, Whoa. All sorts of questions everywhere. Um, my favorite Marvel movie. I'm probably still going to have to say uh, Infinity War. Um, I, I like the story like going into it, and I didn't know. I don't really want to do spoilers or anything. That movie's been out for a while, though. But, um, but yeah, I didn't know how far they were going to take Infinity War. Um, because, I mean, if you've read the comics or know anything about it, it's like, it, it turns out pretty bleak. Um, but I was pretty excited with how it ended. And, like, I like movies that end on, like, unresolved slash not positive notes sometimes. I don't know. Um, it's kind of interesting, like, when good doesn't necessarily win every time and you're just left like, what? Oh, no. Because they really cause you to think and make you think, like, oh, did this happen or that happen? But I just watched uh, Spider-Verse with my family as well, and that movie is great also. Like, if you haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse, it's definitely a ton of fun with awesome music, too. Du -du 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 -du. Cutting your hair while watching this on the phone? I hope you're spiking it up, too. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, 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 um, favorite co-op deck builder. Um, <laughs> there's, there's only a few co-op deck builders as it is, so that's a very narrow category. But I do love Marvel Legendary. Um, I have almost everything for it. Um, I don't have like the new Hulk set, um, just because I feel like I need to play the expansions that I have more before getting more of it. But I want all of it, so I probably need to buy that before... Um, things get harder to find. Not that it will get harder to find, but you know, I just want to make sure to get it while it's hot. Um, <sighs> People giving some fantasy love. What's my favorite TV show of all time? Hmm. I really liked X-Files a lot. I watched a ton of that growing up, and I've watched all of it. Um, I haven't watched all of the new rebooted stuff. I probably should have, um, but I'm not quite sure where to find it. But I really liked X-Files, um, and I'll occasionally go back and watch that. I don't really watch a whole lot of TV. Um, I just try to spend my time doing a lot of other things. Um, even though we have, like, Netflix, like... My kids watch Netflix constantly and everything, but I'm more like trying to do all sorts of other stuff. Like I feel like I can watch board game videos and watch YouTube videos and it doesn't feel like I'm wasting as much time because I'm learning stuff that pertains to, I guess, my job and my interest as opposed to like watching a show. Um, it makes it hard to do anything with that information. You know, If I watch a show, I can't even like talk to people about the show if they haven't seen it because um, they don't want spoilers. So. But yeah, I like to learn things when I entertain myself. I don't know. Like, watch videos about how to 3D print things. Um, <laughs> yes, hardcore praise and worship, that's wild. Yeah, <laughs> screaming how great is our God is kind of kind of insane. But uh, it was fun while, while we did it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, MXPX, the, the lead singer, Mike Herrera, does like live streams of um, 
him like taking requests of MXPX songs like all the time. Like he'll go on Instagram, he'll go on Facebook, and he'll just like be in the chat and like he'll just have his guitar and people will request songs and he'll just play them. And it's amazing because it, it, I don't know how it makes it sound great, but like it's awesome. Da, 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 da. 2019 trends in board gaming, am I predicting? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I know some things that I'd like to see, but uh, my tastes are very much like thematic, like story-driven games where you can like interact with each other a lot and have fun. Whether it be cooperative or whether it be competitive, I like to have lots of theme in my games. And some other people, it's not that important for those sort of things. So uh, sometimes my tastes don't necessarily line up. I mean, some some abstract strategy games are like the hottest games of last year. So it's kind of like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, you know. Um, good times. Uh, if I could bring three games to a deserted island and bring a few of my friends, which three games would I bring? I'm glad you didn't ask which three friends. No, I'm just kidding. You know who you are. I would totally bring you. Um, I, I've, I, we've talked about this before, like in the past, or I have talked about it before on different things. Um, one game I definitely bring is Marvel Legendary, just because there's so much stuff in that game that I feel like I would never run out of like combinations and things to play. And it's cooperative, so if we're on a desert island, playing together to try to beat up the mastermind seems better than like getting angry over other things. Um, what other two games would I bring? I'd probably bring Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, just because there's a lot of replayability in that, too, and it's fun. And wouldn't have Wi-Fi, so I wouldn't be able to download the updates from Angels of Madness. So that's a, that's a no on that. Um, huh. I don't know. I'm not sure on the third game. What do you think is the best 4X game to introduce someone to the genre? <sighs> There's a lot of, like honestly, most of the 4X games I've played, I've actually enjoyed. <laughs> um, just because I really enjoy gathering resources and getting your stuff together and building like a little bit of things to build units than to go out there and actually do exciting things, whether it's completing objectives or taking over your, your opponent's stuff. Um, so Forex games are always fun. Honestly, the fact that um, that Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea scales so well with the different like player counts, um, even though like the price point of that game is ridiculously expensive, but I've really enjoyed it and I've had a ton of fun playing it. And I feel like it's a really good game to get in there because there's like no downtime and it's a lot shorter than the other ones. Um, if you're into more like economic Euro stuff, like Eclipse is always there. Eclipse is always fun. But if you want to have that huge, gigantic experience, definitely don't start with Twilight Imperium, but it's a ton of fun. Or if you just want to dive straight in, make Twilight Imperium happen, because it's definitely the most epic out of the bunch. Um, t -t 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 Nice. Trenton saying, excited about Dice Tower West and hopes to play Spectrops. I played Spectrops on the cruise with uh, Ambi. I taught her how to play for the first time and uh, a few, couple other awesome people. Um, but I love Spectrops. I really need to play some more of the new stuff to, to try that out because I've only played with the new stuff once. Um, does the Dice Tower have me playtesting and reviewing games? Nope. Um, I'm currently doing Dice, just, well, I am the Dice Tower editor, so I edit all of Tom's reviews. So, um, and man, there's a lot of work that goes into, I mean, I don't think you guys understand. Like, we get the games in, they, they have to crack them open and do an unboxing, and they have to go and play that game like several times and figure out like how this game looks and how this game works. And like, there's a ton of, extra stuff like that they have to do to like get ready to review that game even outside of work at the studio here like they'll go to game days like Tom's constantly like setting up different game things so that way he can get the games played so that way he can review them and there's just a lot of extra stuff that goes on when you add in that whole review thing um when I used to do reviews on the channel here by myself it was mostly games that I had played um a bunch uh already and so I reviewed those even though they weren't necessarily the most hot new games Definitely with the amount of games that come through here. There's a ton of work 
getting that stuff ready and making that stuff get reviewed. Um, but yeah. I know, right? Um, with Sam here, they say I have a built-in TI4 person. If only we had time. <laughs> There's so many games to get in, play, and review. If only we had time to play Twilight Imperium 4, maybe it'll happen. Maybe someday. Um, tch -tch -tch. What's my top three video games of all time? I'm literally just jumping around in this, by the way. Not really <laughs> doing them in specific order. Um, and what video game are you currently playing? Uh, okay, so I really love the Legend of Zelda stuff. I like Link to the Past from Super Nintendo. I'm pretty sure like for the longest time that was my favorite game. Um, I really like Super Mario RPG, which is great. But then also I played um, Breath of the Wild um, for, for um, Zelda for the Switch. And that game is amazing. I don't think it will beat out Link to the Past yet because I haven't played through the whole thing. But if I actually took the time to play through Breath of the Wild and actually completed it, I think I've beaten like two of the beasts or something like that, three of the beasts. I don't remember. I'm somewhere in that game. My kids have the Switch so much it's hard for me to get a hold of it. But um, I just don't, I wish time. I, it's kind of funny. Um, what video game am I playing currently? Like we got, like I was so excited. We got Super Smash Brothers uh, for the Switch, the new one, what Ultimate or whatever it's called. And I was really excited about playing it. But uh, my son played it a bunch. But I just haven't taken the time to sit down and play it. I need to like put it up on the TV, and me and Scotty can have like a a Smash Smash weekend or something like that. But for some reason, like. I love video games. I think video games are awesome. And I grew up playing tons of video games. But now, like when I play video games, since it doesn't pertain to something that I can really talk about, which I guess I'm talking about it now, um, then it always feels like I'm wasting my time, which is weird. <laughs> I'd rather like be painting a miniature or figuring out what I'm going to 3D print next or figure out what I'm going to do for a segment. Um, I don't know. I like, I like doing things that revolve around board gaming stuff a little bit more these days. But if I had unlimited time, I'd play all the video games. <laughs> um, what are my thoughts on Scythe? I need to play Scythe more. I played Scythe like twice. Um, and I had a copy of it, and I actually ended up uh, donating it to my church when I left, which is a pretty awesome donation, I think. Um, but they're going to have it for their different conventions that they run there and their different game days and stuff. Um, but uh, I need to play Scythe more. I liked how quick the turns were, where you're placing the stuff on the board and different things, like or placing, like trying to upgrade your little are they civilizations or whatever they're called. Um, but it seemed really cool. It's definitely more on the Yurier side of 4X games. but uh, it's definitely, definitely people love it. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Um, what's better, ninjas or dragons? Uh, uh, I'm probably going to have to say dragons, but I know this might sound nerdy or weird, but uh, <laughs> I have... Uh, watched all of the Naruto series, so I also if if there were ninjas like in Naruto, like the anime, um, I'd probably say ninjas. Um, but I haven't seen a game like even the games that they put out like that that felt like that world, because um, it's really cool. Like it would be really awesome if people made actually a good game in the the Naruto universe, and I feel like there's probably a big enough anime fan base to where it could work, but. I don't know how much of a crossover there are between Naruto fans and board gamers. They're probably watching more anime. Um, but dragons are also cool. Um, which, which obscure IP would I like to see made? Uh, the Last Starfighter. That would be cool. Um, Rogue One or The Force Awakens? Probably Rogue One. I really liked Rogue One a lot. Um, I thought it was really cool, uh, just the way to see all the behind the scenes of all that stuff. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. <sighs> G 
great. <laughs> so TJ Roberts says, it's never a cooperative game with Roy, just him being the Cylon. There are plenty of games where you can't be the traitor. And whenever you are the Cylon or you are the traitor, I always feel like it's easy mode. Not saying that it's too easy to manipulate the people, but it's just easier to win the game because you're working with the board game anyway. It's hard to win those games anyway without being the traitor. Being the traitor makes it like, oh, I got to play the game on easy mode card. Um, it's much easier to win as the Cylons than it is to win as the humans. So I root for the humans either way. Even though when I'm a Cylon, they all die. Um, Oh, why is Optimus Prime transporting a rhino on the shelf behind you? <laughs> um, Tom set that up back there. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Derek donated this Optimus Prime to, the, uh, to the, the, the studio here when he left, and Tom had that set up behind him for one of his things. Uh... Oh, nice. So uh, Patricia says, I'm printing pieces. I just did an episode where I was doing math to figure out the cost of how much things do. And apparently, there's settings in there where you could just uh, change it. I am I am very much a 3D printing noob. I have tons of people asking me about 3D printing all the time since I started doing a thing. But my whole segment is about, hey, this is my journey in 3D printing. Let me talk about it a little bit. And I've brought up a few of the things. Um, but apparently, you can. Uh, input it and it'll tell you the cost to print something out, which is really cool as well. Um, I've definitely been having a blast 3D printing. Um, I, think it's, I think it's funny because uh, I was talking about like, people were like, oh man, is it addicting yet? And I figured out why 3D printing is addictive because you know those mobile games where it's like you run out of time or you can only play the game for a certain amount of time and then you have to wait for the time to build back up before you can play again? That's kind of how 3D printing is because 3D prints take such a long time to print out that whenever it's done, you immediately want to throw something back on there and start printing it again. So it's all this like logistics game of like, okay, I'm going to print this and then that's going to take like 12 hours to a day to print, and then I'm going to print this. It's going to take like like three hours. Okay, then I'm going to put this on there and print that out. So it's like you don't want to waste time with your printer not doing anything, which my printer is currently not doing anything. So I'm excited to get home to print some more stuff out. Um, good times. Trevor. <laughs> uh, my friend Trevor's in chat shaming me for not uh, fixing fixing his thing. I almost had that completely done. Um, Star Wars Biblios. I was photoshopping it up for him. Um, what game do I wish had a completely different theme? Um, I'm not sure. There's a lot of games that could probably be rethemed to make them really cool. I'd have to think on that a little bit. Can I join in your TI4 game at Dice Tower West? Um, I don't know that I'm going to be playing TI4 at Dice Tower West. Uh, me and Sam and um, the, board, uh, the ladies from Board Game Blitz did a, a thing for the Jack Vassal Memorial Auction where we had people play with us at Dice Tower Con, um, Dice, like the, the main one here in Orlando, um, last year. But I don't know that I'm going to be playing TI4 at Dice Tower West mostly just because it would take a lot of time. And I really want to try to play games with as many different people as I can, too, um, and try to like spread out and play. I've never been that far west. I've never been to, like, I don't know, was Vegas considered the west coast? I guess it is. Um, I've never been that far over. I think the farthest ever I've been is Minnesota. Um, so it'll be interesting to go all the way out to um, Vegas. Um, but yeah, I don't think I'll be playing TI4. But if you want to play Heroes of Land, and see, I'll bring my copy. Because I can play that a little bit quicker. Quite a bit quicker. <laughs> um, uh, what did I learn from playing Magic the Gathering in tournaments? 
Uh, Magic the Gathering tournaments are intense, and people don't like it if you table talk and act nice to them during the game because they think you're like up to something. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I played at Friday Night Magic for a while. I grew up playing um, Redemption, which is like this Christian collectible card game um, because back in the day I wanted Overpower. Um, I didn't even ask my parents for Magic. I wanted to play Overpower, and my mom and dad were like, overpower like mutants like what is this which is kind of strange they didn't know what it was so they got me redemption instead um so i ended up playing a ton of that and i ended up playing that in tournaments and like playing it to the national level and like winning tons and tons of tournaments in redemption which is like the small card game is like tournaments at churches and things like that but it was a blast to play um when i actually got older and moved out of the house i uh had a co-worker at my job who played magic and i was like oh dude cool i was like you should bring some cards he actually just gave me like a stack of cards in a bunch of different colors and he's like okay these are deck building rules just build your deck and we'll, we'll play it at like lunch break and i built my deck and um i played him and he immediately was just like shocked he's like you said you'd never played magic before and i'm like uh well i mean i played a lot of other ccgs um i just haven't played actual magic the gathering um so that ended up like we had a whole bunch of people because i worked at target um during lunch break we just sit there and play magic the gathering um battling each other during lunch break and we'd actually like started going to Friday Night Magic together, um, and that's when I ended up playing. I never really played in very many big tournaments, but the, the Friday Night Magic we went to like had like 80 to 90 people at it, so it was pretty intense. I think I went to one like PTQ or whatever and got smashed. Um, but uh, I did a lot in Friday Night Magic, and I actually ended up winning several Friday Night Magics. And when you beat 90 other people out, um, that's not too bad. Um, but I got out of Magic because Magic cycles out. And when your entire deck becomes irrelevant, and then you look at the value or the price of money you have to spend to get back into a top tier deck, like it doesn't matter how good you are at the game. You still have to fork out the money um, to be able to get there, I guess, unless you're on some crazy team or something that has all of the cards and they're working together to make sure everybody has the cards on the team. Um, then it's really hard to get to the point where you can actually be competitive because you have to pay a ton of money to get to where you can be competitive and just paying money doesn't let you win tournaments you have to also be good but then after two years the things rotate out and you have to start all over and then pay tons of money to be competitive again and uh i sold all my magic cards and bought a bunch of board games because i had found some like YouTube channel of some guy in his garage reviewing games and he talked about Summoner Wars and some Twilight Imperium game and they looked really cool. So I sold my Magic the Gathering cards to uh, get into board games. Um, yeah, I don't even know where it is. F&M is truly competitive where I was playing because those dudes were hardcore. <laughs> um, it really depends on the store you're at and how many people are there. Um, but I wish it was more casual. <laughs> Am I planning on getting any new tattoos? I don't think I've gotten a new tattoo for a long time. Like certain things happen in life and you have kids and a wife and mortgage and it's kind of like, I could spend hundreds of dollars on getting tattoos or I could buy more board games or actually pay my bills. Um, I got most of my tattoos, like actually when I had my own apartment and like it was just me and it was a little bit easier to make that cost. And I was playing music all the time and you know, musicians have to have tattoos, right? I'm pretty sure you're not a real musician if you don't have tattoos. It's like in a contract or written down somewhere. Just kidding. Um, let's see. Uh, do I plan on getting better at Time's Up for the live shows? I'm terrible with names, just in general. Like, I don't, I, I mean, 
I don't know if I could name all, like a lot of the main actors in like my favorite movies, much less obscure movies like that are super old. And I told, and a lot of these questions are like, I know, I probably should have known a lot of that stuff, but I feel like a lot of the questions are like from really old TV shows that I've literally never heard of. That's the thing about trivia is like you either know it or you don't. There's no like middle ground there. If you don't know it, then you're just kind of there. So I figured the game's probably called Time's Up because if you know all the answers to it, you're probably pretty old and your time's about up. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Tom's gonna bust in here, but I told him that to his face, so it's fine. Um, questions, questions, what questions do I need to answer? Um, how long did it take me to finish my sleeve? Well, I got it all in like pieces and a bunch of different sessions, <sighs> like forever ago. I actually don't even remember how long it took, probably like over the course of like a year. So it was just like, like three hour session here, two hour session there, whatever. Um, but I'd get like the outline done and then come back for like shading and then come back for like them to color in different parts and I like had the outside done then like the inside here and then like all of this done together except for like the part back here. Um, but yeah, it was just like over the course of a year. Basically, I had to wait from one payday to the next payday to make it happen. But the cool thing about tattoos um, is like I've bought tons of things that cost a lot of money um, in the past, and I don't have majority of those with me anymore. And I still have my tattoos, which is cool. Um, I still like it, so it's fun. Uh, who was the most intimidating person to work with in the Dice Tower in the beginning? I don't know. It's kind of, it's none of it was really intimidating, I guess, because when I started to work here, um, I had already like interacted with a lot of the different the different people that work at the Dice Tower, like even like contributors and stuff. Like I'm good friends with most of the contributors, and I really want to be good friends with all the contributors. So if you're a contributor and we haven't hung out yet, we need to hang out. Um, but uh, but yeah, I don't think like talking to Tom and like getting on the Dice Tower was probably more intimidating at that time. But now that like I've gone to dinner with them and lunch and played games with all of them pretty much like it wasn't actually intimidating because I knew everybody already um, but it, it's kind of funny back at the beginning it's like you just learn how people are you know like Tom is very straightforward with most things he's like this is this and this is that and I was just it's kind of interesting like very like a lot of his emails back are just like this and it's just like okay cool and you, you just know like okay that's what it means um, but it's cool, like getting to know people more. Um, but yeah, everybody's the same. They're they're all cool guys and fun to hang out with. New Overboard says they want to say that I'm awesome and thanks for hanging out with me on the cruise. Um, I want to say I hope your ladders fall on the table and you get more teardrops. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we played uh, Catch the Moon and it was a lot of fun. Uh. Did I enjoy the hair dye and would I do it again? Um, it's kind of funny because like I did the whole hair dye thing as like a part of my um, Patreon for my podcast or whatever at the time. And I had all my patrons like like uh, vote on what color they wanted my hair to be. And like for a long time they were like bright pink was like really high on the voting. But I think it ended up being like orange and purple. Um, they like tied. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to do both. Um, so I did that for a while basically until it grew out um i've had my hair dyed different colors in the past and things like that so um it's it wasn't that big of a deal for me to dye my hair um especially because at the time like i was basically staying at home with my kids and then doing board game media stuff at night which didn't sustain me very long <laughs> so that's why i had to end up going and getting a job uh that uh was more full-time um but 
Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd dye my hair again, especially now that it doesn't necessarily matter um, what color my hair is. It's always harder to get into job interviews if your hair is all crazy colors, because that's just how the world works. Um, very good times. When space vacation becomes viable, would I go? It would have to be really safe. Like, and are we talking like low Earth orbit? Are we talking about like going to another planet? Are we talking about going to the moon? I mean, the destination is important. I don't think, I actually know, I would not want to live on the moon or Mars because like life would be hard just because like you're not built to live there <laughs> there's none of the things you need there um i think we should like try to make those things happen but uh i wouldn't mind visiting as long as it was like extremely safe but uh yeah i wouldn't want a chance of getting stuck in a place that is not habitable for humans to live in <laughs> um let's see <laughs> do all the beards in the office make me want to grow a beard it feels like everybody around me has beards and I'm not able to have one and it makes me very sad I've tried to like grow my facial hair a little bit I mean you can probably find videos or pictures of me where I have like more facial hair um, it just doesn't work like I don't know what's wrong with my face. Like, it doesn't grow properly, which is very sad because uh, beards are epic, but I'll never be able to be epic in that facet of my life. Are you envious of any of Tom's hats? No, because hats cover up my hair, which would be terrible. I have to stay on brand just like he has to stay on brand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. Um, what was the process for me when I applied? Was there a formal interview or was it a conversation? Um, yeah, so the application was pretty pretty interesting and pretty fun. Uh, like, like I said, I was working like 50 hour weeks at my job like overnight. So um, I, I was really looking for a change anyway. Um, I had been like trying to, I felt kind of stuck at my job and I worked hard and they loved me there and uh, it was, it was cool, I liked the people that I worked with, but I needed to change just because my wife worked during the day and uh, I worked during the night and it was just really hard for us to even see each other at the time. Um, so when I saw Tom posted this, I immediately emailed him and was like, hey man, I want the application, I want all this stuff. And he said, hey, we've gotten a bajillion things, but I'll definitely get you the information for it. Um, and then he sent me basically this giant questionnaire, I guess he sent everybody, this giant questionnaire of all the these different questions about the, the job or like basically just to fill out like, not really like a personality survey, but just like what you would do in this situation, what you do in that situation, just sort of like you would be, do on a regular interview. Um, but it was just all text and I was like, cool, um, I'm not going to just fill this all out and send it back to him. I wanna put the time in and the effort to like make this into a video to show off that I'm passionate, I really wanna do this. Um, so I was working 50 hour weeks. I basically like skipped sleep one night and stayed up all night shooting video, answering each and every one of the interview questions. Then I edited it all together and tried to add in pictures of me at conventions and pictures of me with the guys and pictures of like different answers to the questions and different ways that I do things and just I tried to edit it together to make it this really cool video um, so I basically like applied through a, a big video that I had edited and tried to make all cool like I even had like a picture of the United States with like my little meeple guy on a rocket flying down to Homestead Florida um, I don't know I tried to have fun um, it was really hard to do because I had to like have it render overnight because it ended up being like a really long video with like because I was answering all these questions and trying to be as sincere and like as passionate as possible doing it and trying to make it look good um, but then I sent that in and Tom was like um, you know I can read really fast, right? Why would you send me a video? And I'm like, ah. Uh. But I was like, listen, I wanted you to know 
that I was going to put the time in for this. And so that's what I ended up doing. Um, I was super excited about that. And we had like an interview like face to face um, on that. And we went back and forth because he had several people he was talking to and was really excited about, which I think one of them is going to be um, the guy who's coming in um, or the person that's coming in to, to be the second video editor. Um, but yeah, I was really excited to uh, do all the application stuff. And that whole week, I was like super nervous about everything. And the funny thing is, the day that I applied and sent Tom the email to, uh, to get the job here, my current job uh, offered me a promotion where I was at, which is literally insane. It's kind of like, when, when it rains, it pours with good things. And there was other stuff going on at the same time too, which was also crazy. So I was really excited about everything going on in my life at that point. Um, and I'm really excited to be here now. Um, do I have any Kickstarters that I back that I'm excited to get in? I'm really excited about getting in Batman, so that's one. Um, I back the uh, the Trogdor Kickstarter because I really loved like strong bad emails. Um, those were a blast. Um, and what else did I back? I back several things. I already got my Kickstarter in for Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Um, I was moving down here and I wanted to change up my address and I was like, hey guys, maybe you should just like, I don't know what my address is going to be because I'm moving down to Florida. I mean, you could just send it to me. You know, it'd be cool. I'm good friends with the guys at Gameland. They're really cool. Um, but yes, if you're a Dice Tower West and you want to play the new Heroes of Land XC expansion, I'll play that cool too. Um, uh... What is the worst game I've ever played? Um, I don't know. Uh, so Tom sent me a box of games uh, back when I was doing reviews a lot that had some really terrible games in it. And one game was a game from, um, I think it was like Career or something like that. It was a cool looking like dungeon crawl abstractish game where you're like different monsters going around the dungeon basically trying to fight each other and get points. And I don't know if it was something missed in translation. Like I got the English rule book and was like reading through it and it was really a huge struggle to figure this out. And I was trying to get it done. I don't think, like, I never even shot anything for it just cause like the game just didn't work. Like with the rules that I was given just didn't work. So I felt really bad cause I tried to subject my friends to trying to figure out how to play this game and it just fell apart. Um, and uh, that was probably the worst game I ever played. Um, be a good time. How do you join Favorite Game Friday? Um, well, normally people like message me. And it literally just has to be at like the right time when I like need more people. Um, but I've had like so many people request to join Favorite Game Friday, and I love to like have like more people with like variety opinions on there as well. Cause that's one of the things I love about Favorite Game Friday is like when everybody has, like if you feel like you have something different to add to the group or you like completely different games than a lot of the other people on there, definitely hit me up. You can message me on, I don't know, like Instagram or something like that. Cause most of it goes through Instagram and, um, and maybe I can hook you up. Uh, but yeah, now I'm gonna get like a ton of requests to join Favorite Game Friday, so we'll see. I'm gonna try to keep them short overall, just cause that's kind of what that show is, is just, hey, we're gonna say the names of our favorite games real quick. Um, and it's not gonna take very much time out of someone's day to uh, watch it. Uh... I try to have fun, I try to have fun. Should more games use an electric app or debit card component? If I'm playing the board game and it's charging my debit card while I play it, that's not good. Um, but I don't know that we need more games with apps. Um, I mean, I don't know that seeing a game that's necessarily has an app in it makes me more excited for that game. But when there's certain things that can be done with it, it's kind of cool but I also don't necessarily want it to slip too far into the video game territory, um, where it's like, 
I still want to be able to move the pieces around and be able to interact with my friends face to face while playing the game. I don't want to be always just in the app. Like I feel like Mansions of Madness does a great job of still having the board on the table and you're still looking at each other trying to figure out if someone's going insane and working together. I mean it's still more about the people around the table than just being stuck in that app. Um, if there's a if the game has too much of the app integration stuff in there, um, where you're getting away from actually moving the pieces around the board and working together, or not even together, even like against each other, where you're interacting with the other players at the table, um, I don't think I'd like that as much. Because um, at a certain point, you could just play video games on the couch with each other instead. The sleepover party game was traumatizing. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Uh, so uh, now that I've moved, is there any chance of seeing me back at Mace in Charlotte anytime? So <laughs> it'll probably be really hard for me to get, I mean, I, I probably just won't be able to get to any like smaller conventions or anything like that. Probably most anything I'm going to go to is going to be with the Dice Tower. Um, and there's just a lot of things. Like we want to make sure that we're getting our reviews out there and putting out tons of content and making sure everything's good in that area. So uh, going to like a lot of smaller conventions would be really hard to pull off, especially since like Mace would be like. 11 hours away if I drove and it'd be really hard to fly into that sort of thing. So mostly just cost. <laughs> lots of cost and lots of time. Uh, um, did my wife have any anxiety about moving across the country or was she always on board? Um, my, my wife was excited about like the whole thing i mean we we'd overall been looking for a change like i said i was working like overnights and she was working during the day um so we're like on opposite schedules we actually get to see each other a lot more now that i've been down here in florida she's currently um staying home with the kids getting my son set up in school and she's been applying at several different places down here um in homestead and the surrounding areas in miami and stuff like that um and i'm sure she'll eventually like find a career down here as well but we've been enjoying like being able to spend afternoons and weekends with each other seeing that it's been it's been a little while because we used to only have weekends and on those i was ridiculously tired after working 50 hours a week um so we were both excited for the change it's definitely really hard packing everything up you own and moving down to a different state and just the craziness of like Getting a condo and getting the cars transferred over and getting everything in the right place has definitely been stressful for both of us, but we're definitely super excited to be here. And I definitely make sure to spend lots of time with the family to uh, make up for it. She, when, when uh, she was excited that I applied, she was excited when everything was going great. And like, she was super excited through, through the whole thing. Like just updating her like, oh my goodness, what did Tom, she, she would message me multiple times a day, did, did Tom reply back to you? I'm like, no, he said he's got a lot of people. He's like trying to figure out all this stuff. He's like, did Tom get back to you? And it's like, we're just trying to figure out what was gonna happen in our lives. Um, but yeah, we're excited. It's definitely a huge change, definitely very different, but a lot of it is good. And um, definitely excited about all this stuff. And yeah. Good times. Um, I don't know. I guess uh, with that, I'm pretty much pretty much just wrapping this thing up. <laughs> Tom came in and got me all distracted. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks everybody for joining me. And uh, definitely thanks everybody for asking all the different questions. You're all great. And I'm super excited about everything here at the Dice Tower. And definitely super excited to uh, be making more content for you guys and pumping out all of Tom's reviews. And Tom needs to get back to uh, filming some of those so that I can edit them. <laughs> Okie doke. Well, I'll see you guys uh, next time. And uh, peace.